idea of the uh, of the wind or the power being determined by the instrument that uh, you use it. Lion on the banner is not an instrument, but Rumi actually is looking for something which is uh, absolutely an instrument, has got no function of itself, and it has to be in the hand of somebody else in order to uh, become uh, live. Without somebody else playing with it, using it, employing it, it has no function, no life, it is a useless um, piece of, uh, of matter. There he finds, I mean, in read imagery, he finds all these uh, aspects, all these dimensions. And because of this, actually, reads come to help him uh, a lot and to, uh, to, to, to give him the, the best uh, symbol to convey all his messages. Now, uh, <coughs> okay, you saw here the piece of the read of Ney. Uh, we played. As I said, I mean, by itself, the reed is nothing. Has no voice, has no music, and has no life. So there is always somebody behind it in order to blow, blow into it, in order to breathe into it, to make it uh, live. So everything in the world, including human beings, of course, are like this. And uh, so, make I mean, the, the, another idea is the, which is, I think, the, the, the most important one in this respect, is the idea of the boundlessness of the air. The idea of formlessness of the air. Let us know this, and let us have it in mind, and uh, when I'm speaking about God next time, I will elaborate on this. For Rumi, um, I mean, God is formless, okay? is absolutely formless in the sense that he is unconceptualizable. Not because we cannot conceptualize it, not because of our shortcomings, because of his objective existence. He is beyond any concept. He is beyond any uh, opposites. Even his unity, of course, Rumi was a devout Muslim. He was a monotheist and he believed I mean very firmly in the unity of God. But the unity of God is not a numerical unity, according to him, according to most of Muslim theologians. He is even beyond numbers. And that's why they use the word true unity of God, rather than the numerical unity of God. You see? Because when you say the numerical unity, that means that, of course, you have got number one, you have got number two, you have got one, two, and things like that. So, because of this, in order to avoid this kind of impression, this kind of conceptualization, they use the word true unity, which is beyond numbers, beyond all opposites, beyond everything. So, um, air, which is being blowed into the reed, breathed into the reed is, is the best example in the world in order to give you the impression of something which is boundless, which is formless. And then, of course, it is the reed, it is the nave that forms it, gives it the form, gives it the shape, gives it the determination. And uh, so, uh, here again, you see that uh, the relationship between the two and uh, the things that the imagery of reed can give us, but the imagery of the lion and the banner cannot, and the mountain and the echo cannot, but all these of course have got something uh, to tell us. But then there is another dimension to the imagery of Reed, and that is the idea of the breath, of the breathing of God into the world and especially into human <coughs> beings. There is a magic here. I'm going to read you one of the verses of Quran. There of course uh, you see that according to Quran which Rumi no doubt was very familiar with it and uh, uh, as I said there are maybe 4,000 allusions to Quran in the whole Masnavi so this means that he was so immersed in Quranic culture that uh, I mean uh, just came out from his mouth uh, without any deliberation um, there you see that God tells us 
uh, that we breathed into human beings, our soul, which has been subject to many interpretations. First of all, what is the breathe of God? Secondly, what is the soul of God? Now, but we have got it, and I am going to read you. I mean, only there are in a number of uh, places in Quran, but now this is in the um, um, <coughs> chapter 15 uh, of Quran. But just in order to give you an idea of what is there. Now, and uh, remember when thy Lord said unto the angels. I am creating a mortal out of potter's clay, of dark mud altered. So when I have made him and have breathed unto him of my spirit, do you fall down, prostrating yourself unto him. So the angels fell prostrate, all of them together, save Iblis, i.e. Satan. He refused to be among the prostrate. So God has breathed into us from his spirit. This is, uh, uh, this, uh, actually Rumi, what Rumi did was he took this idea of breathing of God into human beings. So he blended it and mixed it with the idea of music, which he so loved it. So now the, uh, the, the, the product is this, that we are as if the reeds next to the lips of God he is always breathing in us and this breathing was not only for the Adam of a father or forefather it is in every one of us actually and it was not in the beginning of the creation of mankind it is continuous he is always breathing into his uh, creatures especially in human beings so that is the magic that uh, works